are doing the hardest work on the planet, keeping the planet going. Yeah. And anything that we can do to serve the plants is a good thing. Yeah. And plants should not just be seen as crop plants mm. for edible purposes, but as creators of environments, and they create global health. Without the plants, we have no health. Plants create environments, and environments create plant. The, the whole place is that around the buildings, it's plants around the world, and then it becomes indigenous plants to the Western Ghats, and then it becomes plants totally indigenous to this place. And then the farm is worked in on inside all of it. work is that these small plants are in high danger of being extinct very quickly, especially now. So it's a kind of a search and rescue operation. And we go all over the mountains to bring back plants. Yeah. And literally it's like this. Somebody yeah. saw that this had fallen off and then yeah. we pick it up and we bring it back. So these are extremely endangered in the wild, the tree ferns. So mm -hmm. it's nice that they have just created their own place. science of orchid pollination or something. So for everybody there's a little thing. It's like going to the public library and there's something for everybody. Comic yes. books to the greatest yeah, works yeah, of yeah, literature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's very important because you don't assume things. I don't assume that people are interested in this or that or that. But by having a place that is, you know, the birds suddenly come through and then you realize that the whole environment is so rich. And you can see 40 species of birds as we just stand here and, they go, and they'll just like go through. Yeah. So then the forest also has a chance to tell its own story and we don't have to constantly demonstrate it. No, it's being demonstrated by the <laughs> Plants To take a toehold and then they create other opportunities. So rock walls are great, steps are great. At some mm -hmm. point, even the roofs, they start to fill up with all kinds of plants. Mm -hmm. And this idea, if we were to just like propagate around the world, that life actually wants to be there. It's like a whole mix of Stop things that's board. going on. And the whole land is very diverse. It's extremely rich. You'll see 3,500 different kinds of plants here. Oh. <laughs> There's more than 150 different kinds here, and the reason to work with them is that other plants like special yeah, ones. Yeah. And this rainforest consists of a very high percentage of plants that are very soft. And the soft plants are an indicator of the health of the... So the moment the forest is cut and it starts to dry, you start to lose the plants on tops of the trees. Even if the trees are standing there, you start to see how they're drying out. Oh. Somebody has found this fallen one, and this is our work. Our work is to go all over the mountains and find places where nature is being cleared. And then we bring back plants from trees that have been cut or from dam sites or from places that have been burned. And the work is that these small plants are in high danger of being extinct very quickly, especially now. In the rainforest, you get this thing called piggyback riding. So something on top of something, on top of something, on top of something. And somehow they create many opportunities, which has these plants called epiphytes, mm. contributes one third of oh, the really? hydrological cycle. Wow. And all these are the heads of the rivers that come, the Kaveri, the Krishna, are all coming out of here. You, it's not just deforestation. If you if the if it dries out and you lose the epiphytes, the local environments, we can see how this place has changed. You know, earlier people would walk and they would feel the heat just at the doorstep here. 
you know, as soon as you left it. But now it's a little bit further that the shade is still there. So the sense of coolness and how this district used to be like that mm -hmm. and how in 40 years time it's become the hot, a very hot place yeah. and how this leads to water. Yeah. It's a very clear connection. their own compost <laughs> and these are called bird's nest, nest ferns yeah. and they grow on trees and then the falling leaves from the top of the tree will gather there and with moisture, mist, rainfall they just disintegrate and the whole plant has found a way and there are many plants to make its own compost oh. because how do you <laughs> make organic matter on top of a tree rich yeah, in yeah. organic matter Naturally. it's constantly decomposing yeah. so all this is also living beings on the tree yeah. You know, but this has found a very clever way of catching, yeah. and then inside it, you'll sometimes find other plants growing. Then you'll find worms inside. Earthworms are inside this uh -huh. on top of the tree. botanical garden sanctuary that we visited yesterday and what I can say is that they are protectors of the diversity on earth. I have seen some like them uh, spread out around the world. What they do is basically be guardians of life. They are amazing people. I was so proud to see that one of the leaders is a woman, a very wise woman that just take care and embrace biodiversity as what it is, the gift of Mother Earth, the gift of gas, the gift of evolution. And they are taking care of this biodiversity that we think is not useful for anything, you know, that you don't have to eat it, that you don't have to uh, use it for something, but it's not true. Everything on the planet is a very subtle balance. So what they are doing is taking care, protecting, be guardians of beauty, of the flowers, of the little plants that you don't know how to use them, but they are there for something. So I was totally impressed and I am deeply grateful that this kind of experiences happen here in India. Little, little things that uh, are interesting for different types of people. So some people are not interested in conservation. They don't care about conservation. But they are fascinated by how just the anthurium can have this shape and this shape and that shape and that shape and that shape. So what we try to do is that every person who comes up the front entrance should have something that they find here that is of interest. And the moment you find this hook, then you can say, but the Anturians, they require the tree or the tree. You know, you can have a lesson that is woven around every person's yeah, 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 yeah. interest. Because I don't expect that everybody who comes here is interested in conservation. 